my reading challenge basically uh, how i'm going to put this is a mess hello everyone and welcome back to my channel thank you so much for being here today i'm going to be sharing with you my top 10 read of 2020 i believe that 2020 was the best year when we're talking about reading for me uh, because i have discovered new authors i have read a lot of great books also strayed further than my comfort zone either by picking up new books from other genres that i don't usually read and also using other formats for books i even picked an audiobook this year which is something that i don't usually do but without further ado let's start according to my goodread account i had read 100 books which is not true but at the same time it's true because my reading challenge basically uh, how i'm going to put this is a mess so uh, i read a lot of manga i have read a lot of comic books uh, short stories collection of short stories anything that i can get my hand on and not the books that I already have so anyways uh, I've read a lot of books that aren't novels if that even makes sense I've read a lot of comics manga also I've read Doctor Stone this year uh, I'm also currently reading the Attack on Titan manga a lot of comics that either provided to me by NetGalley or ones that I had purchased online and read on my Kindle it is in general 100 something 100 books I, I don't know but 100 i trust my my goodread account so it say i've read 100 books i have read 100 books so anyway uh, this video is not about that obviously it's about the 10 books that i had loved this year i'm going to be starting with the books that i enjoyed and then i'm leaving the best book or the best series because who knows but until the end uh, number 10 is the series that i had been waiting for so long to pick up because I've watched the first and the second adaptation of the series and I loved it and a lot of people are saying that the books are even better and it is The Person Jackson and the Olympian by Rick Riordan this series is five books long it's middle grade fantasy I really loved it and I really enjoyed the Greek mythology representation in it the stories for a refreshment is about Percy Jackson who discovered one day that he is the son of Poseidon the god of the sea and which explains the fact that he's always surrounded by monsters, he's always attacked and always has to change because something worse happened each year. And he is taken by his favorite teacher, which turned out to be a satire, not a satire, but a centaur. And he takes him to this summer camp called Camp Half Blood, which have other kids who are fathered by the Olympians and they learn how to fight, how to go on with their life and it is not another book, Greek mythology book if we don't have a prophecy there's a prophecy that was told years ago and a lot of people believe that it's about Percy Jackson so each book follows a quest that Percy Jackson and his friend Annabeth and, the, and his best friend the satire... what's his name? it's not mentioned here but he have a satire friend and both of them each book goes on another quest this quest is inspired by a story in the greek mythology we have the second book which is percy jackson and the sea of monster inspired by uh, odysseus journey back to his hometown the third book is percy jackson a titan curse which focus more on the asian war between the god and the titans anyone who likes Greek mythology like me is going to be enjoying this book the language is so easy because this one is targeted for uh middle grade and children basically so it's easy to go through uh not not that long to be honest and great start for anyone who doesn't know a lot of things about the greek mythology so i always recommend starting with percy jackson and the olympians because it has all the information that you need to learn, need to know about the Greek mythology. So yeah, number 10 is the Percy Jackson The Olympian series. Uh, number 9, this one is the second book in a series. The series that I started last year, I read the first book, I didn't enjoy it because it didn't live up for the expectation and the hype that I've seen all over my Instagram and Goodreads. But when I reread the first book in anticipation to pick up the second and the third book in the series, I have loved it because I already know what's going to happen and I was more focused on the characters and the setting and the world building. So I find myself that I was enjoying it, but the second book I believe is the best book in the trilogy, which is so rare to have because mostly the second book doesn't live up to the expectation of the first book number nine is 
The Wicked King by Holly Black. Holy shit, this book, guys, it's just, it's even better than the first book. I believe that this is the best book in the trilogy because the action in this one, the politics in this one, the introduction to some characters, we see a lot of the relationship and the, the friendship and the relationship between the two main characters, Jude Duarte and uh, Carden Brenner and... Br Carden is my favorite character because he's so sassy, he's so funny, and he just, he's the best. And, and I can't wait to get my hand on the book that, that is more focused on him. I think it's called When the King of Elfham Learned to Hate. Bed stories or something like that. Uh, I'm going to be putting the picture here. Uh, I can't wait to read this one because it's more focused on Carden and I really love Carden but this one is just great for anyone who has read the trilogy is going to be agreeing with me because the first character is setting up the, the world and the, the characters are going to be meeting throughout the trilogy but this one is more about the plotting and the plans and I always always love the silence before the storm when everything is just shaping up for the action that's going to be taking place in the next books uh, this is something that I always look up in any series and always in any book that I read because the silence before the storm, the way that plans are taking shape, uh, the way people are gathering, gathering around and making plans and just, just making things happen but actually without them happening before, if that makes sense. But I really love that and I really enjoyed that. Crown of Midnight by Sarah J Maas. This is the second book in the Throne of Glass series. I love this one better than any book in the series. I'm currently reading the fifth book which I'm not really enjoying that much because the story is taking a turn that I didn't sign up for and the main characters are just not that interesting compared to the side characters. But anyway, the second one we see how Serena Sardotin is accepting that the world that she's living into is more than the the championship that she, that she took in the name of the king that it's more than the city that she's living into it's m so much bigger and the problem that is going to be facing her in the next books is so much bigger than some monsters that she met in the capital also this one we have the plans coming along we meet new characters we see new settings we see another side of the character that we have met in the first book and this is sitting the place, sitting the uh, the world for the action that's going to be picking up in the third book. A lot of people say that Airfire is their favorite, but I think Crown of Midnight just matches perfectly what I always look up in a series and all, and basically in a young adult fantasy because it is slow paced, but at the same time there are a lot of things happening. It makes you on the edge of, this, of your seat because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know. Uh, the things that you have in mind when are going to be happening you know that the main characters are plotting or planning for something but at the same time you don't you don't know when things are going to be happening or what what actually is going to be happening so yeah I really enjoyed the plotting the planning the politics and everything in the books and I think this one is my favorite in the series I'm not enjoying as I said the other book in the series because the story is taking another turn the main characters are annoying I'm only picking up this series because of Manon because she is great she is amazing I am loving her arc and she doesn't have a lot of appearance in the book that I'm reading right now which is Empire of Storms by Sarah J Maas but um, hopefully uh, we're going to be seeing more chapters about her and about a lot of side characters number seven is a classic uh, it is a dystopian classic called Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury I always don't read the author name i don't know why but i need to work on that this is a classic the stupid classic set in a world where firemen are responsible of burning the most troublesome thing in the world which are books instead of putting down fires we see that books in this world are prohibited you, you can't own a book you can't be seen reading a book because they believe that books make people angry make people feel feelings that that always making him making his life troublesome and thinking and they just want to take all of that and make the world just happy and fun and consuming meaningless media i've talked about this one a lot in a previous video i think i'm going to be filming uh, a video reviewing this book because i believe that talking about this one for five minutes doesn't do it justice because this one covers a lot of topics that are matching our relationship today i love how 
uh, the author has this prophetic eye about the things that are going to be happening in the future and how things are matching perfectly our reality so i'm not going to be talking about this one a lot if you want a video of me reviewing this book comment below or tell me or send me a message because i would love to talk more about this book i just i need any <laughs> uh, chance i have to talk about this book obviously number six is a non-fiction a surprise to be honest because i don't read a lot of non-fiction uh, i don't enjoy non-fiction they make me so bored and sleepy and make me feel like i'm studying for something but i pick up this book because i was one day book shopping with, with zinep and she literally made me buy it telling me that i'm going to be enjoying it it's so different from any non-fiction book that i've read and it is born crime by trevor noah this one talks about his childhood when he was in south africa and he's talking about how the racism was there even after the abolition of the apartheid uh, he's telling uh, everything that was wrong with south south africa the racism there how, how he navigated his world there when his father was white skin and his mother was african uh this one is just eye-opening to be honest i love this i enjoy this and i couldn't get enough of this one i think i'm going to be picking up the audiobook which is narrated by trevor noah because i can't get enough of this book it is so tough provoking and i believe everyone should read this book because it just opened our eyes about the racism because we always hear about the racism either in the united states or in europe or with within our country but we don't know the reality reality apartheid and what's actually was happening in south africa and takes another perspective about how people were living there under the racism and apartheid so this one was really fun to read uh it made me think a lot about a lot of things it made me learn about the history of south africa which is something i i was ashamed of because i i know nothing about what actually was happening in South Africa and my parents always telling me that it was really bad there so this book helps me to see a lot of things that were happening in South Africa under the apartheid. The fifth book that I loved and enjoyed this year is Inferno by Dan Brown. I love Dan Brown. I love his book. I own ev almost every book that he has published and this one just stand out because it is set in, in Florence and I love Florence. I can go on talking about the history impact of Florence on Europe and the world, the architecture there, the history there, the family, the Medici. I cannot stop talking about Florence. So this one just filled me with everything I needed to learn about Florence, either about the architecture or the history uh, and everything. And with every Dan Brown book, we are following Robert Langdon as he is going on a new quest, uncovering a mystery with the help of a side character. I love this one. I believe this one is my favorite Dan Brown book. If you love history like me, if you like architecture like me, this one is your fix. Uh, I know a lot of people don't enjoy Dan Brown books because they are not that deep. Uh, it's almost like going on a tour when reading this book with a side quest. And for me, this is what I really love because as I said before, I don't like reading nonfiction. I rather like watch a video talking about the topic that I want to read about than reading a non-fiction book about this topic because it feels like, like I have a homework so this one have this aspect telling you the history teaching you something but with side quest that it is as important as the thing that he's telling you about so Dan Brown Inferno my favorite book of the series. Uh, number four is Norse Mythology by Nate Gilman I picked this one when I was uh, book shopping. Uh, I checked my Goodread and I've seen a lot of people really enjoy this one. I didn't know why. And then I went to TED uh, Education and watched a lot of videos about the North Mythology. I've read a lot of articles about the North Mythology and I found it really important. And also when I was reading the Attack on Titan manga, there are a lot of references to the North Mythology. A lot of people were saying that the writer of the manga was really in was inspired by the North Mythology a lot. So I was thinking that I'm going to be picking, up, picking it up and seeing how I'm going to be enjoying it. And honestly, it is the best decision that I have made because I love this book so much. I love the way Neil Gaiman is talking. I always say that when reading this book, it makes you feel like 
go into a party and you see that one person standing in the corner not doing anything just looking around and you approach him and he starts telling you stories out of nowhere and you find yourself that you want to spend more time with him and you rather be there listening to his story than being actually in the party it also makes you feel like you are around the bonfire and there's a bard telling you songs and stories about words that you have never been and it just had this warm feeling although nothing is warm about the Norse mythology but it just makes you it's like listening to bed stories i really loved how now how neil gaiman is is narrating i loved how he stayed true to the north mythology how he also included the references and the actual writings and where he was inspired to write this one this one is basically a collection of all the stories from the north mythology starting with the creation of the world tell uh, ragnarok which is the end of the world with it we see uh, a lot of stories uh, including Thor, including Loki, Odin and a bunch of other Norse gods and goddesses and I really love this one. I planning to read this one uh, sometime in the future because it's fun and you can and it has a lot of stories that you can one day just flip around and pick a story and read it and just sleep because basically it feels like you are reading a bed story I love this one, I love the North Anthology and I'm so happy that I picked up this one Neil Gaiman is one of my favorite authors because I know that he has wrote uh, an episode for Doctor Who which is my favorite science fiction show and I know him even way before I started reading him and I enjoyed it and when I read last year Good Omen by him and now uh, North Mythology I am working more on getting more books by him because he is a genius the way he, he narrates is so great the attention to details and the plot and it just it's all wrap up in, in, in a beautiful prose and I cannot wait to pick up more books by Nate Gaiman so Nate Gaiman, North Mythology if you want to read more about North Mythology if you want to learn about North Mythology because it's so basic and it starts with the basic things and you can go into this book without knowing anything about the North Mythology or the mythology in general Number three is also the second book in a series and it is Gemina by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This one is great guys. I just I I can't stop gushing and talking how great the Illumini 5 is amazing and also this book I've read Illumini Illumini the first book and now the second book and I believe the second book is so great. I haven't picked up the last book but I don't think anything is going to be topping this the the ending in this one because i i can't talk about this one without spoiling it guys so please pick up the lmi files you're not going to be to be regressing it the way how this book is is written is so fun so original and i've never seen a book like this one it doesn't make you feel bored i don't want to talk a lot about this one because i don't want to spoil the first book so please pick this one i love it i love everything that's written by amy kaufman and jay christoph these two are the new authors that i have discovered this year and i can't wait to pick more books by them because the way they wrote this book is just genius and amazing i'm waiting for them to finish uh Oro rising trilogy we have the first and the second book out the third book is going to be out i think next year or the year after but when the third book is going to be hitting shelves i'm getting the trilogy because the way they work together sounds like they have so much fun together and with that we have a product that it is a genius piece of art <laughs> this is a lot but the Illumina file is just the highlight of my year and especially gemina is the highlight of my year so please pick this one, please pick the Emily Fi. I know that the format of these stories make a lot of people hesitate before they picking this one, thinking that it doesn't fall into the traditional way of how books are. But I believe this is original. I believe the way it's said doesn't make you feel bored. I remember that I finished the first book in like two days because it was so easy to go through. Uh, I, I hope that the third one is better. But I don't think that anything is going to be topping the plot twist at the end of this book. In the second place, I have two books because I couldn't pick which one to put at the second. As I said before, I've read a lot of great books this year and putting together this list has made me so sad because there's a lot of other books that I had loved and I couldn't put here. But the first one is The Sorry Sea by Erin Morgan. This one is just 
so whimsical, so magical. Uh, I've read the first book by the author uh, called The Night Circus and I believe that nothing can top how magical this book makes you feel and how warm it makes you feel but when she came out with the sorry sea it's even better and i don't believe that anything is going to make me so warm as reading erin Morgenstern's work because the sorry sea it just it's so big and it's uh scared me when i started reading this one but the story is just so 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 much fun the way it's put it's clever uh, we have the story and also we see that other things are added that doesn't make sense at first but when you are going through the story it makes so much sense it fits perfectly with the plot at the end and basically the books follow a boy called Zachary Rowling one day he is in his university library and he finds a book with no name and no tag or anything when he opened it and saw reading he find his name written in that book and basically is telling a chapter from his childhood he, he doesn't like to talk about so he got curious and discovering this book sparks a chain of action that he doesn't want to be part of but he find himself being too much involved in this in this plot and it, it just like uh, playing a video game and it has a lot of side quests but at the same time there's a main quest and it's so much fun you meet people they tell you some instruction and then they disappear and you go on your next adventure it's like going through uh, a video game i really loved how clever this book was and the setting and the characters and everything about it it's just so so beautiful and so warm so please pick this one this is the highlight of my year it's just how many times am i going to be saying this is the highlight of my year but basically this one is so magical and this is the highlight of 2020. And the next book that came in the second place is also the Greek mythology book by Stephen Fry called Stephen Fry called Mythos. This one is a compilation of all the stories in the Greek mythology. It uh, tells the story from the creation of the world till the creation of Greece and the ancestor of uh, the Grecian right now. And this is so much fun. The way Stephen Fry is narrating the stories and adapting the Greek mythology's stories and how is introducing some characters that I already know, but I find myself like really shocked and the at the edge of my seat because i know a lot of stories that are in this book before even picking up this book but it didn't stop me from being wowed by how great stephen fry is is talking it just uh, makes you see how amazing stephen fry is as a narrator this is the first book in a series the second one is called the hero and it is about the heroes of uh, of olympus and the heroes that lived in Greece. The third one is coming out this year and it is about the Battle of Troy. I cannot wait to have this book because I love the story of Troy. I love the siege of Troy. I love all the characters there, the the mythology, the stories. Written about the the, uh, the siege of Troy is so great and I cannot wait to read this one. But second, Stephen Fry Mythos. I cannot recommend this one a lot because even though you have no idea about the mythology you just don't know where to start when you want to go into, uh, into more into the Greek mythology mythos is your guide it's fun to read it's not like any other non-fiction book like uh, the Iliad or the Anaid or the Odyssey it's so easy to read uh, the language is so modern and the way Stephen Fry is describing and talking about the characters and the story there is so amazing so please pick this one up if you like greek mythology like me and you want to discover new stories about the greek mythology or just want to get into the mythology and you don't know where to start so mythos stephen fry second place and now for number one guys this series has blown my mind i cannot describe how i loved reading this series i i, I can't even tell you how much this series means to me i picked this series blindly i had no idea what it is about uh, i was trying to read more books by people of color and especially black black authors and i've seen it on uh, world wonders instagram and i had no idea i just went straight i know a bookshop that is selling used copies of books and i'll contact them like please i just need the trilogy and she was like yeah it's available and i picked it up and it 
turned out to be the best series I've read this year and I think the best series that I've read in all time I am a huge fan of fantasy I am a big fan of science fiction but when you have a series that have the two merged together in a beautiful and a great way it just it's so rare to feel this way when you are reading the series and I am talking about the fifth season by N.K. Jameson. This is the first book in this in the Broken Earth series, and we in this book we follow a world where every couple of years a season happen, and the season means that a bunch of environments like catastrophe happens. There's uh, earthquakes, there's uh, vol volcano eruptions, there's uh, splitting in the earth, and each season happens, and the people have to adapt to it. There's because like for a couple of years nothing grows and there's no water and people have to live with this because the, they believe that the earth is a living thing and it is acting this way angry because someone has stole her child. In the first book basically we have three points of view. The first one is Isun and she is looking for her daughter because in this world we have these people who, who can control. The uh, movement of the earth and people are shunning them or killing them and they I'm flipping this book because I was holding it backwards but anyways in this world these people who can control the action or the movements of the earth are pursued and killed and they believe they are dangerous for the settlement of people that are living there because they are uncontrollable and they can anytime start a season by accident so Esun knows that her daughter is this kind of people and and her son is too but when she came home one day she find out that her husband had has killed his son her son and taken her daughter somewhere and she has this goal to pursue her husband to look for her daughter and we have other point of view we have a child who discovered that she has power and she is brought to someone who can take her and train her so she can use her power for the benefits of the continent another point of view is a young girl who is there for the purpose of bringing kids with this power so so following this three point of view makes you lost at first but as the story goes on you see how they merge together how the, the three people came together and their plot and their act just makes sense i always say that when you go into the broken earth by nk jameson it's like being on a boat with no direction in the middle of the sea and you don't know where you are going and you're just following some shallow steps but as you go on in the story you find out that some details that were said in the, in the beginning really make sense i also believe that this kind of trilogy is is the type of book that you should go without knowing a lot about you don't with knowing so much little because the joy and the magic of this book is when you discover new things and going into it blindly which which is something i did so basically the broken earth is the favorite series i've read this year and the top and at the top of uh, of my list i really enjoyed reading nk jameson way of telling or her, and, and her way of writing i am looking for more books by her i know that she came out with a book called the city we live in or something i i, I don't know it's about how cities have souls and they are birthed and they are just living being and it's so genius the way that she came out with this thing is so great her mind is just so so much so much more than i had ex expected so when you have science fiction and fantasy mixed together it just gives you this beautiful book which is the broken earth trilogy so these are the top 10 books that i had read this year uh, let me know what book that you had read this year and you really enjoyed i didn't do justice for a lot of books in this series i've read other books that i loved and i if i could if i can just like talk about all of them i could but it's going to be like an hour long thank you so much for watching please don't forget to like and subscribe and all that jazz so see you next time bye one, two, three.